and we're back. So, we're still, we're still, still, still in the first region of Sunless Skies. Yesterday we found Hybris for the first time, and we've started to do a little bit of that kind of quest line. Plenty of stuff to do still. I think we're even still missing a port. But we do have our new train. The Failsafe. An excellent choice of name from Wanderer Down. And we are going to see if we can't find Titania today. Alright, we have already done the necessary amount of resupplying. Let me just check something here. Souls for Port Prosper. Well, I don't have any souls, and I wouldn't even know where to get souls. I guess jumbled souls is the thing. Literature for Traders Wood. Now that I do have. Approved literature can be reliably purchased at Perdurance and Whirlbury Juxtamere. Uh, whatever, I've got it. It's it's in my bank. There we go. Easy peasy. Got it. Now, let me take a look at the journal, because there's still like plenty of things for me to do. She promised to leave New Winchester for good. Planning a premiere soon. We do need to drop off. I do have an experiment to drop off at the company. It's the Hybris Pus that we collected. The settler wants to go to Titania, which I don't know where it is. Costumes at Port Prosper. Don't have nearly enough skills for Kurilin to be any good. Sweet Jane wants us to do a favor, but we declined because it was bonkers. We need to talk to the Rat Brigade. Let's do that, because they're trying to find the location of Sarge's vault, and that's an interesting storyline. And I haven't followed up on, with them since we, since we did the reading of the will. The Rat Brigade has made a mess of your galley. Straw, bits of blanket, and patches from damaged uniforms have been gathered into a makeshift nest. In contrast, tiny notebooks, battered derringers, and hip flasks that are not as small as you might expect, are stored with, an, with care, stacked in a corner away from pr prying hands. Discover what the Rat Brigade are up to. They know the location of Sarge's vault. They don't seem to want to leave your locomotive. They need the numbers to the account. Where do they think they'll find them? Perdurance. That's Perdurance again, but we haven't seen it yet. I'm reasonably sure that Perdurance is through the transit. Old wounds. The air is thick with the scent of jasmine. The rats have acquired a hookah pipe and are reminiscing over their lost Sarge. Albrick twitches his immaculate whiskers. We need to find Vilma, our strategist, but it will be awkward. She was Cinder's paramour. There is a snort from somewhere in the nest. Albrick continues. We lost touch with the others, but Vilma will know where they are. And when we open the vault, you will have a share, of course. Last I heard, Vilma was residing at Perdurance as a pet. Albrick's, Albrick's expression speaks volumes. No idea where Perdurance is. Since I've only heard of it very recently, I'm pretty sure it's, pretty sure it's through the Albion transit. Oh, but we can also ask Petronella to continue Sarge's tale. Albrecht is sunk in gloom, but she might take up the story. The past unburied. Petronella takes up the thread, frowning over her glasses. So we had a new boss, the lieutenant now. He wanted the admiration of command. But the Tackadies and the Stovies didn't trust us because we was mercs. Just rats, right? We did eventually get a lucrative contract from the Tackadies to sabotage the governor's engine to stop her fleeing New Winchester. Risky. Who else had the know-how to get it done, right? Her question is rhetorical. Her smile is proud. She pauses. More some other time, I think. We'll spend a little time with the Rat Brigade. I like these guys. They're neat. They can be a riot if they're in the mood. 
rats in the locomotive. Only Albrecht is available for conversation today. Petronella is nursing a hangover. Cinders has, in a gesture of kindness, gone to the galley to seek some kind of food-based cure. Albrecht steeps a tea for you both. This tea is a particular delicacy from Aclius, I believe. His conversation is extensive, erudite, and acerbic. As one might expect from a spy. He's a master of espionage, our Albrecht. Okay. Let's head out, then. Let's take a look at where we need to go. So, we need to drop off our stuff here at the Trader's Wood. I'm willing to bet that there's something in this big dark space. My guess is that there's- my guess is that maybe through here we were not going the wrong direction. Still, we have to get through Trader's Wood first, so. Let's go ahead and we'll make our way up through. Sky Train Choo Choo Game. I do have to say that I really like having the opportunities. In Sunless Sea, a lot of a lot of the trading was just done by rote. It was doing the same routes over and over again with the same goods. Having the opportunities, especially since the opportunities pay as well as they do, has been pretty neat. We're about to be ambushed. Hold on. We never just get salvaged without also being ambushed. I'm not jettisoning anything. Oh, I see. To pick up any of this, I would have to jettison something. Well. In which case, I'm gonna dump off some of those supplies. Huh, nothing's attacked me. That's weird. It's weird that nothing's attacked me. Sus. Usually that's when you start needing the star mad. And then they and they're angry at you like it's somehow your fault that they're star mad. And sometimes you don't even recognize that you're about to be fired upon until you're like, wait a minute, why are they shooting at me? I may or may not be speaking from experience. Shut up, I'm extremely professional. Alright, a quick stop into Port Avon. For the purpose of court reports, we'll also check on the opportunities there, just to see them. Just to see what's going on. Port Avon, I'm on the wrong side. It is lovely. It's a pity that they don't like having us stay here for very long. Port Avon. To the bazaar, please. No bargains available. Alright. Well, that's all well and good, I suppose. Let's try... I guess I already have a port report. I must not have turned in the last port report I picked up. That happens. It's okay. Let's maybe, since I do have a not insignificant amount of terror, and I'd rather it not get worse, let's check. Man, I want to play cricket. Where is the cricket? Here we go. Play a round of cricket. One of the teams is a person down. A rare chance to join the games. The endless match. Nobody seems to remember how long this game has been going on, just that the score is now almost a formality. You play your part, and points are scored, yet by the time you leave, it is no closer to an end. Nobody seems to mind. It is, after all, cricket. I'm curious. In Fallen London, there is an Everybody Loves Cricket storylet that I have not played because I don't know anything about cricket, and so it didn't interest me. But we hear it's good. Cow in his research found it. So, let's get... Nah, let's just go. We did our terror reduction. It's a little better. We can go. So I do like the Bedivere class ship. It's definitely a little trickier to maneuver. 
than I am accustomed to. For going out to Trader's Wood, I still don't think that we have the skill points to do the quest line in Trader's Wood, but we can drop off the literature for this opportunity, get our money, and then we'll keep going. This is unfortunately going to be a pretty short day of Sunless Skies. I've just got stuff to do, so I need to bail a little earlier than I would prefer. But still, I wanted to get at least something done and maybe do a little exploration. It would be cool if we found Titania today. It would be cool. There is some part of me that's absolutely curious about how the story in Trader's Wood goes. Right, because trying to not hit walls again. The thing we know that I'm hitting this at. Right, it's that classic, there's a guy in the crypt, we don't know which guy it is. I would love to go on another archaeological expedition. The fail better archaeology expeditions, pretty fun actually. I quite like them. I think that's still, that stuff that happened with um, the Empire of Hands is still some of my favorite storylines from Sunless Sea. So I'd be curious to see how the traders would contracts. A stoker sings, I may home, may love, may gold. I have my breath, I have nay breath. Heart is cold, so fold my arms and raise my hood and lay me down in the trader's wood. Creepy, the princess looked concerned. Why would you name a wood after a trader? A sewer, maybe? Oh, princess, the word trader is one of those words that frequently depends on one's perspective. We're not here for any of that. We're here to drop off some books. A respite from labor. The distinguished retailers, Raven's Court and Stamford, operate a small logging outpost in the Trader's Wood. That is missing. Having a logbook for those messages would be good. I do... You're right. There should be a logbook. That being said, having the messages show up on screen, way cooler. Because in Sunless Sea, I would often just ignore them because they would be in that little logbook, which I'd never look at anyway, because I'd have a whole bunch of other things that I would need to do. Having them in the game is good, but there should be a recording place somewhere, I agree. All right, we need to get to, well, let's, let's stop first at the bazaar. Let me get rid of this stuff. Here you go. Literature for Trader's Wood. The Somerset students camped in the dark wood require fresh material for their continued studies, entertainment, and occasionally, roughage. They've requested five consignments of ministry-approved literature. Trader's Wood lies to the blah blah blah. We're, we're here already. We did the thing. The classicists are delighted, but you can't please the theologians. Too fanciful, apparently. The medievalists cannot seem to come to a definitive conclusion. You are paid well all the same and invited to go stargazing in the Pale Wood. Well, that's nice. I'm glad I get to go stargazing. All right. Let's try... Let's try the parting glade. The forest rises behind, rises behind the station where a few tents have been set up. What might be an owl calls from somewhere in the wood. In the far distance, a great stone barrow rises over the trees. The glade, an oasis of wildflowers and sweet meadow field in the midst of their brooding trees, is where captains meet to do business and bring their ventures to the wood to conclusion. Well, let's get our port report in. There's no one here, but perhaps someone will take an interest in how the wood fares. Outside of the Somerset camp, the great forest of bronzewood trees has gone untouched by human hands. Voices sound in the deeps of the woods, forlorn and far away. The wood is vast and vastly lonely. We could explore the glade. I think that'll give us a little bit of terror reduction. That's what I'm looking for here. I'm looking for another terror reduction. Explore the glade. Birds trill in a nearby trees and the sweet scent of flowers pervades the air. Far, far away. There is no one else. There is no one else here at present, but there are signs of recent passage. A discarded set of cups from some clandestine picnic. Loose paper, hastily torn from a notebook. A few bullets in scorched grass. People come to the glade to conduct meetings as neutral ground and as a place to think, secluded from the watchful gaze of the high wilderness. Well, that was not a terror reduction. Let's try something else. 
Um, a respite from labor, maybe? Here we go. The distinguished retrailers, Ravenscourt and Stamford, operate a small logging outpost in Trader's Wood. Hours are long and employment is precarious. Very seldom do the woodcutters and charcoal burners get a day off. Today is one of those rare occasions. Let's rest. The workers share their picnics out on the meadow. An aged charcoal burner plays a fiddle. There we go. Some terror reduction. That's all I wanted. Lay down your burdens. The workers make room for you on the grass. You sup on cold meats and flat wine under the bough of trees. Later you play cards and dice until the fiddler strikes up again. A charcoal burner brings out some whiskey she'd been saving. The singing lasts well into the night and almost drowns out the sounds of the wood. Now let's see what we can do for shops here. We can pick up some supplies. I would have liked fuel, as I would always like fuel, but that seems to be a trickier place to go. Alright. So, I don't believe there's anything. I think the move might actually be to swing back to Port Avon. You can get fuel there, if I remember correctly, and we'll try to examine this area again. Like, you, I just, you can just tell that I'm missing something central in there. So... We'll swing our way out. Quick trip back to Port Avon. Just for the sole purpose of gathering some fuel so that we don't run out prematurely. And then we'll do a little exploration. It's like snooping, but on a grander scale. I do realize that were I a different sort of person, we probably would be in the Albion Transit already. I just want to be thorough. I'm not saying that I have to uncover every dark port, every dark part of the map, but I would like to make sure that we hit all of the major ports at least. So, we'll resupply and we'll do a little exploration. How goes the magic train ride? It goes, it goes. I don't have a ton of time left today. Like, I've got stuff that I need to go do, so it's probably not going to be a particularly long stream. We're looking for Titania. They also keep mentioning Perdurance keeps coming up in, in, in quests and whatnot. I think that one's through the transit. I believe Titania is in this first region. Come back to Port Avon, resupply a little bit, and then we'll go deal with some of the dark parts of our map. I do quite like the Bedivere. It's still a little wibbly for me to to fly. Hello, I'm here for your shops. So we have 16, maybe the move here, 12, Titania is sunward of Oberon and starside of Mab. I mean, it is a Midsummer Night's Dream. Alright, so I have a couple of empty spaces in the hold in case we find something interesting, but we're gonna mostly resupply so that I don't have to panic quite so much in my explorations. Not like the fuel and the supplies go bad. Now, let's see. And there's Starbreeze coming in with our stretch. Alright. So you can see that kind of central space between Trader's Wood and the Leadbeater and Stainrod's Reserve. I made some headway into here. I think I ran out of gas, is what happened. And so I wound back up. I'm almost certain that there's something in here and we just didn't get to it. So we're gonna swing that way again. What did I miss? The eternal question. So I've got my neck funny. I 
hate that. I hate that uh, most of my great injuries, like most of my really painful injuries, have come from the result of sleeping improperly. Like, I don't do anything that causes great injury in my day-to-day -day life, but I'll sleep on my neck in just such a way that they'll be like, well, you tore your shoulder again. Good. Great. It's just very intense sleeping over here. All right. What did I miss last time? Age. It's not my favorite. I, I will say that I don't feel especially old most of the time. Like, I don't have back pain the way that I've noticed other people having back pain. My knees don't hurt the way that I notice other people having hurt knees. It's just that sometimes I sleep on my shoulder. Ah, here's what happened. Marauders have made their encampment here. Take some hours, you'll be fine. Okay. I now remember why we had to retreat last time. There were indeed marauders, a lot of them. And we had just one bad gun. We have better guns now. I wonder where this is taking. that I feel 18. Like, if I had to put an, a uh, uh, an age on how I feel internally, I would tell you I feel about 25. Gideon's Bronze. Oh, look. Hey, Jagoff. You gonna come at me, bro? Yeah, I know how to play this stupid game, too. They're Star Madden, so they are occasionally just going to do crazy, bonkers, suicidal things. But they're also tricky to hit! There we go. Star Madden explorers. They're wild enemies, because they will just kamikaze right into you. The crew of this weathered engine had been driven mad by the winds and the stars and the things that haunt the sky. Well, we're okay on hull right now, so let's examine the captain's log. They may shed a light on what befell the explorer. Success! Always defeated. The captain's door is covered in knots and crosses. That's X's and O's for American. Like, tic-tac-toe? X's and O's? So it transpires in the rest of the cabin. His logs, his body. In every game, the knots won. Your search turns up valuables, and you return to your engine. Alright. Hello, are there any more star maddened explorers here? Okay, so this is bait. So this is a trap. Oh, we repaired our hull a little bit. That's new and different for us. I'm gonna send out my scout. There's a big enough area that I don't want to spend too long. A report from the scout, it's found something. Okay, well I can't mine this. I don't have mining on my ship just yet. My train just yet, and then I hit it anyway. You hear the, the heart of the war is silent. Oh good, something terrible is up ahead. You're near the heart of the wood. This is another one of those areas where terror is increasing pretty rapidly. Here at the heart of the forest, a great barrow built from ancient stone stands, gates of starforged bronze, and block the entrance. We're just gonna leave. I'm not here to fuck around. I'm not gonna find out. We're just gonna continue on our merry way. Nope, not that way. Oh my god! I was not prepared! I was not prepared for the screw spinster. I'm just gonna keep flying. I'm just gonna keep flying. Maybe she'll leave me alone. Maybe she'll leave me alone if I just run away. <laughs> me and my usual tactic. Maybe if I just run away from it. It's fine. It's fine. Well, the 
this was not the port that I was looking for. And I took a nice chunk of terror on that, so that's fun. Oh, and a peacock wind. Bugger. Oh god, now I'm turned around. I'm in the wrong direction. I'm in the wrong direction. And this guy. Back off, man. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I'm not attacking. I'm not attacking. Please don't eat me, Chorister Bees. I'm not attacking. I'm just gonna ride the wind down. This has all gone tremendously south. <laughs> Bees, marauders, peacock wind. Just everything went real bad on us. Scout has found something. Cool. I'm glad my scout is- Oh my god, lights! Nope, keep flying. Nope, keep flying. Keep flying. Keep flying. Keep flying. No, leave me alone. I don't have any forester nectar. What did you find? Something to the south. So there's the Parzival. Remember, we did find the Parzival. We dealt with that. Is this all just gonna be land? Is this all just gonna be stuff I can't move around? I'm gonna have to change directions, I guess. My guess is that this is our port, maybe. No guarantees, because the scout is somewhat unreliable. We're not going back into the bars of all. No, thank you. We need to turn the light back. I turned it off because there were bees, and I was trying to escape them, and now our terror is at 45. <laughs> Just a quick little jaunt, I said. This will be fine, I said. These guys. Excuse me. Hello. Hi. Y'all are the worst. God damn it. Really? Really? Too hot. Too hot. Too hot. At this point, I'm just going to die. Like, at this point, we're just going to run out of hull. <laughs> Scavenge for parts. Okay. Damn. Go carefully, marauders. Excuse me, I'm just gonna. Wonder why I haven't explored this part of the map. Oh, wait. The weird thing is, I know that these guys can see me. God damn it. <laughs> Why am I not going fast? Well, all of that was bonkers. All of that was wild. I thought we were just gonna do a little exploration. I thought we were just gonna light back on. See all of the things, and now we're you know, it looks bad. It doesn't look good. What fresh heck is this? The driver points at Titania. Flower of the Reach. Father wanted to move here, but these happened. I mean bees do happen, don't they? But look, we found Titania! I knew it was somewhere. A new porch, the Garden of Heaven. 
Oh, good. Good. A touch of the skies. Skyfarers exposed to the haunting lights of the stars are prone to sudden obsessions and erratic behavior. You discover a stoker angrily defacing the engine's Bible. He claims that here in the heavens there are more pertinent gods than King James. Immediately, he launches into a sermon about the burrower below, the Worm Mother, general progenitrix of the Devourer of Days, who are called the Agene. Agene? She tunnels, she tunnels the paths across the sky. Every transit is a trespass. We must give praise. Oh boy. Well, we have the supplies to do this. Let's go ahead and issue an additional ration of brandy to the crew. Perhaps you can facilitate your crew members' return to sensibility. Strangers in the night, at least our terror fell. That's a nice bonus. Right? Everything is bad. That evening, your engine is loud with the song of, with some song and laughter. The sky shanties are perhaps a little lubricated. The humor laced with a touch of mania, but for now, the fears of the sky are forgotten. A passing Kenton Carey grumbles through the cold night. It tuts at the bright, glaring warmth of your windows. It flicks a disapproving antenna at the noise and the hour. When you have passed it by, it's glad to have the quiet and cold of the sky back. Doc. Doc. Lord. A new port, Captain. Thank God. Titania is cupped in the petals of a colossal orchid. Petty with scent, lurid with color, an enclave of bohemians have made it their home, seeking inspiration in the wildness of the reach. Yeah, cool, great. Can I get to your dock? Okay. So we can repurchase supplies here. That's good. The chorister nectar. Remember how I was running away from the bee saying I don't even have chorister nectar? If you have chorister ne nectar, they will attack you. The bees will. It's not great. Orchid or a fly trap? Run. I mean, this might be a run kind of situation. I don't know, we haven't tried anything yet. Oberon's Landing. The port unfurls itself, welcoming you ashore. This perfumed haven was intended for thinkers, artists, philosophers, and poets. Instead, you enter its main dome to find yourself surrounded by arguing bohemians and the unfinished shells of buildings in a variety of styles. Nobody looks happy, but everyone agrees it's someone else's fault. Well, that's just city planning. That's just what city planning is. Okay, I'm gonna throw this settler off my damn train. Drop off the settler. You're here! They've arrived at their destination. Whether or not they still wish to be here is another matter entirely. Encourage your passenger to disembark. You've brought her to where she wanted to go, despite her criminal past. That's right, she did have a criminal past. I kind of forgot that. Um, my general response was, as long as she's not causing trouble, I'm gonna pretend I didn't see this. She tips her hat as she disembarks and deposits a heavy purse into your hands. She whistles a jaunty tune as she makes her way through the station. Excellent. We've got some experience and some sovereigns for our trouble. Let's go back to the landing. Let's get our port report. Such beauty, such a pity about the nearby chorister hive. A thousand voices. What is Titania? A question with no easy answer. To the poets, a place of inspiration. To the stoneworkers, a t an untouched slab. To the playwrights, a blank page. A place of tranquility, of creation. And your interviewee pauses, suddenly looking worried. Did you hear buzzing? Apologies, must get inside. You can't hear, see or hear anything, however, and must assume it's just a force of habit. Sounds like they've got bee problems. Meet with the rhapsodic mayor. As first among founders, she gets Titania's only office. The mayor is only available when the port is undamaged. Can the port be damaged? Titania's petals fill the air with a perpetual perfume, but eventually you've become accustomed to it. Right, eventually you'll go nose blind. Even so, the scent of the many flowers in the mayor's small office sends your senses reeling, obviously unaffected. She sits behind her desk and gestures for you to take the other chair. Well, let's ask her about Titania. How can a place like this flourish out here in the dark? Flowers of the High Wilderness. A spectacular place, isn't it? We couldn't believe that nobody else had colonized it after. Well, whoever built all these crystal domes and spires. Honestly, I can't believe our luck. That wasn't a hint? 
It wasn't a hint that people didn't colonize it? After they built stuff, they just left? Ask about work in the port. Even a place might, like this must want for something. A polite refusal. The rhapsodic mayor shakes her head. I think you will find us most self-sufficient, Captain. Enjoy your visit. Take in some poetry. If I think of anything that we might require, you will be the first to know. Return to the main square. There's nothing more to be done here. Let's also explore Titania. Such a glorious place. Every step reveals new wonders. Maybe we can lower some of this terror somehow. The Jewel of the Reach. Light sparkles through the jeweled petals on the marble-white paths. Wherever you explore, poets and singers perform their latest works. While artists peer behind canvases to try to capture the beauty in oil and chalk, in the horrors of the high wilderness, this is a place of safety and wonder where nothing could possibly disturb the peace. Hmm, but what is that buzzing in the distance? We can return from time to time to see how it's faring, I guess. The Porphyry Font. A veiled pavilion rests in the curve of one of Titania's great petals. We can donate Sky Stories. I don't know what it does, but we can donate. Here, the melancholy poet gathers stories from Skyfarers. She then arranges to pass them on to any artist or writer willing to pay for inspiration to spur their brush or steer their pen. Well, I've got 13 Sky Stories, and I don't really want to donate any of them because I just don't have a ton. Well then. I don't have any undistinguished souls. Oh, those are... They're selling. They're selling souls. They're not buying souls. Nope, none of this looks like anything that we can really muck with either. In which case, I will pull up there, since I can't really take anything back with me. Well, shoot, I was hoping that we'd be able to do something. But I guess not this time. Well, how are we on time? It's kind of looking like I already need to start making my way back to New Winchester. I know it was so short. I'm sorry it was so short. I've just I've just got stuff. I've just got stuff that needs to get done. I don't know if I think that any of this stuff is going to connect outward. Something over here might. But I'm pretty pretty sure that this doesn't. And I don't know that this will bring us over to Leadbeater and Stain Rods. I'm pretty sure we're going to have to go the long way. Let's undock. We'll see about finding our way back without dying. Seems unlikely, but we'll see if there's any, any gap that we can escape through. No gaps. Gonna have to be the long way out. At this point, my concern is mostly the terror. It's not great. The terror that we've currently got is not particularly good. It's not enough so far that it's gonna cause me like a world of hurt, but it's not good. see if any of the stuff on this other side can get us through. Right, all of this was fully encir encircled. Maybe something over here won't be. Just trying to get out. Just trying to get out of the little death ring. And hopefully not in front of bees. Away from the death ring, but also away from bees. Okay. Yeah, from here we'll be able to swing out pretty easily and get back to New Winchester. Well, that's not the worst. That could have gone much more terribly than it could than it did. We just need to get back. I don't like this fog though. we've been here before. An abandoned signal box. The signal box is shrouded in grey, 
close up, you see that the box is covered in delicate webs studded with cocoons. From the blue and white pattern of one bundle, it appears a spider has trapped a teapot. Inside, beneath a desk covered with rusted levers, is a luggage trunk. Captains in dire need can borrow from the cache inside, but custom dictates that they must later replenish it. We'll just read the ledger. We don't need to dig into the cache. Captains who withdraw from the cache should note their name and ship and what they took. Occasionally, they'll add anecdotes. You will gain a vision of heaven or sky stories. A recent entry. The hand is the handwriting is poor but legible. Captain Janeth withdrew fuel, giving no reason. There is a column for miscellaneous notes. The captain warns of a condition afflicting her crew. It started during a period of downtime. One took up gazing at the stars and encouraged the others to in consideration of the heavens. This has since become a fixation, and the entire crew only grudgingly leaves the windows to perform their labors. That's not great. You gotta get your crew land side then. Let's leave. This is a place of folly. Already nature strives to claim it. It's not a place to linger. Away. The stokers work vigorously. This place makes them yearn for the riotous camaraderie of New Winchester. Good news, friends. That's where we're going. We are turning back for the riotous camaraderie of New Winchester. We just gotta go in the right direction. A spidered signal box, foggy with webs. I sometimes just see the something grave. I wish that they had their own place in the key, right? Like on the chart, it just says something grave, which makes me think, oh, is that something I haven't explored yet? It should just say signal box if that's what it is. The distant nebula shines in this plate. It's light as mellow as butter. When the Tacades won the upper hand in the reach, a new wave of settlement began. What am I docking at? A homestead? Oh. Settlers who live so far beyond the edge of civilization relish hardships of solitude. They will fiercely defend their small territories, but occasionally welcome company and trade. The homestead will is warm and welcoming in the wide night. Its windows are gilded with lamplight. A sturdy settler beckons you in. Well, they've got a colony of ants, and we need that for the researchers at Leadbeater and Stainrod, so we're going to grab them up. Bring a colony of ants aboard. I hope they don't eat my damn food. A few shovelfuls of dirt into a glass tank, and you've thousands of crawlers to bring him. We can only do the one thing, and that was the one thing we did. Nope, keep, keep traveling, friend. Yep, we're just gonna make our way over to New Winchester now. Um, you know, we're already so close to Port Avon. Let's swing up and see if we can't do something about our terror. Even if it's just a little bit, it'll help. Even if it's just a little bit. The higher your terror, the more you're gonna run into terror checks. Where bad things can happen to make your terror worse. Why I'm so adamant about treating it early. It's a quiet day. Well, we can get repairs. So let's do that. Only repaired the hull for a much better price than we would have gotten otherwise. Okay, Port Avon. All right, dock the village green. Let's take a relaxing stroll. Your terror has fallen. A short walk. Didn't fall by much. Above a golden nebula is a fear is fierce in the above. A golden nebula is fierce in the sky. Amber light dapples the curving lanes. Locals nod to you cautiously as you pass. A light drizzle of silver rain brushes the villages. Its beads are bright and tiny as pinheads. Let's sit with the eel fishers. They line in the straight, stony edge of a block that juts into the sky. Their rods hang over the edge. Colonies of partner eels, smoky as sardines, breed on the underside of the port. That lowers some terror, too. That's a little better. You watch as the fishers snag their wriggling prey, heave them onto the rock, and put an end to their thrashing with eel mallets. The catches are infrequent, though, and aside from those occasional struggles, always swiftly ended with a meaty thwack, you can sit back and enjoy the starlight and make conversation. And let's watch a cricket match. Because that's a nice big chunk of terror gone. 
We are no longer welcome in Port Avon. That's okay. We have we have gossip to trade. The great game. Is there a more restful way to spend an afternoon? You sink into the glacial rhythm of overs and innings. You enjoy the parabolic descent of the ball into the fielder's waiting hands. You admire the gnomic pronouncements of the umpire. You've worn out your welcome. I know, I know. It is suggested in firm and explicit terms you'd best be on your way. I'm just going to the dock. I'm gonna share some gossip. Share some... Here we go. Share exotic gossip with the locals. They're always hungry for news. The more trivial, the better. Making friends. You make for the... You make for the nowhere, the local pub, where you can be sure of an audience. Ears bend to overhear your conversation about a London scandal. One resident even buys you a drink, an unquestionable honor. That way, when I'm next ready to drop by, I won't have to deal with nonsense. Okay. Let me just do a U-turn out. Nowhere or no now here? Nowhere. Now here is not a thing any reasonable person would go into. Just throwing it out there. Now here is unnecessary. You would just say here. Now would be implied. So there is a little town in Arizona called Nothing. And it's it's definitely a little ghost town. I think it has a population of something like five. And I think it's on the sign that it says something like the people of no of the people of of this town stand for nothing. They love nothing. We have been assured repeatedly that this town, the town motto, was definitely written by a bunch of drunks. The taste of smog, the sound of iron on iron, we are home. We're gonna drop off these port reports and then we're gonna head back to New Winchester and I'm just gonna have to call it a day. I know it's a short one, I've got stuff to do. Victory Hall. Ah, uh, yes, hi, I'm here to just deliver port reports. Please give me my money. Also, I will trade for Savage Secrets, because we might need to... Oh, we've lowered terror. Churning in the port reports does tend to lower the terror. Let's... Undock. For the tradition of the stream, we try to always start and stop at whatever could be construed as our home base, which for us is New Winchester. We will swing around to the dock. We've already done most of the repairs and the terror reduction. I'll just see what needs to be seen. And then we will call it a Just checking in on anything in the city. Here we go. Attend the grand premiere. Madame Lumiere has wasted no time in organizing her premiere. To express her gratitude, she has given you tickets. This was the woman that we picked up in Hybris, right? Her friends here in New Winchester asked us to go bring her back from Hybris, and she did. And we did. Oh boy. Madame Lumiere has reopened a theater beneath the arches of the Bishop Bridge. Prominent tackety sit with the London sympathizers. They have formed a brief truce, united in their loathing of the cramped velvet seats. A light flares on the plaster wall. The film begins. The film is titled the Concupiscence. Concu cons conspicuance? Nope. Concupiscence. Sorry. Of the Verdants. Flickering images of painted lenses jerk across the wall. The camera luxuriates in the collapsing brown flesh of a fruiting fungus. The flight of a sporing body. The sudden bursting of a violet fungal sac. The prolonged death spasms of a cameraman. There are gasps from the audience. Yikes. Yikes. This is exactly me developing my mycenophobia. I would, I would hate this. This would be so unfun. Admire the wider picture. If you avoid looking at the foreground, there is much to appreciate. 
The film strips have been painted to reveal the lush colors of the landscape, the violent purple of the fungus. There is an awful beauty to the whole thing. So color photography and colored filmography, originally, if I understand its history correctly, that's how it was colored. People went in and painted. It wasn't until later that we got colored film. It is difficult to entirely ignore the energetic and occasionally traumatic activities occurring in the foreground of every shot. But you persevere. Lumiere catches up with you as you are leaving. I don't know why you hurried every- why everyone hurried away. Anyway, I'm venturing into new territories. Meet me later if you like. I mean, if you attended the premiere, God help you. And now Lumiere would like another meeting. Well, we got a vision of heavens for our trouble. Well, let's meet her again since we're here. Madame Lumiere has promised a meeting. She's currently occupying one of New Winchester's cafes. She's provided the table number. A life's work. She rings for two cups of nectar-infused tea. I crave the stuff, she says, a smile creasing her face like a well-used cushion. I'm too old to be lugging cameras around anymore, waiting for the perfect shot. My own fault. I could have stayed in London, but I wanted to see the stars. Thanks for helping me home. This is where I'll stay now, I think. She coughs into a yellow-stained handkerchief. Time to fund films rather than make them, I think. The coughing worsens. Please excuse me. She leaves you with a hurried goodbye on the bill. Do you have some kind of fungal thing that you're going to spread to everyone and it's going to be the Percival, but it's New Winchester? This. This is why I have developed the phobia of funguses. <laughs> now she's over here coughing. Alright. Let's perhaps not out of here, because none of that is new or different. We don't need to repair the locomotive. Let's take a look at the bazaar in case anything is different. Munitions for the mines. Do I have munitions? Just one ba one box. Not enough to fulfill an order. And also souls for Port Prosper, but again, I don't. I don't have anything for Port Prosper. Or I certainly don't have souls. Let's check the market. We're good on these things. I will pick up another plate of fuel. Since we're not shipping anything, we don't have to worry so much. Nothing we need to take to the bank. So I think that means that we're finished. I'm going to go ahead and get to the outros. Give me just a second. Oh, actually, let me... Let me save and exit because it's a little easier if I do that. Okay. Okay.